speechless. Amazing. Speechless. I'm Jacques from SSBB Builds. I've been racing front wheel drive for over eight years. I won a championship, came runner up in two others. I'm building this BMW to find out what it's like to be involved with rear wheel drive cars and the classic BMW heritage. Join me on this discovery as I share my passion. This thing is quite worn out, it's done a lot of miles, almost 300,000 k's, which has probably been turned back. Welcome to the BMW build, where I'll take you through the entire two and a half year process of getting this car to what it is now. It was a mammoth task, but I eventually got it done. Stick around, this should be fun. Talks to you, listen! Yeah, on the scale, let's have a look. That is without me in the car, with me in the car. First up was the baseline diner. car made a whole 101 kilowatts on the wheels just keep in mind that this is at uh, 1500 meters altitude it also made 202 newtons odd about 5000 rpm we then started gutting the interior pretty much from the back end to get rid of all the carpeting then took off this horrendous rear wing and got stuck into the rear seats. There was a lot to do because this was a premium vehicle. Pulled out the driver and the passenger seat and got stuck into removing all the carpeting. then removed the dash and got stuck into removing the HVAC system which was quite a task, weighed a hefty 5.7 kilograms. We then removed the lining from the roof and all other ancillaries. got stuck into removing any redundant wiring and then moved on to the dry ice method of getting rid of the sound dampening. Pulled a whopping 12 and a half kilograms out. Here I just wanted to check the difference between the normal seat and a race seat. That's 10 kilograms less. Unbelievable. I then measured up and made up a bracket for the driver's seat. In the end, I didn't use this bracket because I, we didn't end up using this race seat, simply because of the damage. We then got stuck into removing the tow bar. 18.4 kilos. We then got stuck into removing the rear glass and I needed that for a template you'll see later. Got the thing on the trailer and took it off to the fabricator for the roll cage. After a few months we got it back and then needed to move on to getting the car stripped. This meant 
going through the painstaking process of bagging and tagging everything and removing the engine. There was a lot to be done as this thing had, hadn't been out in all of its life. It was quite a process and if you see the state of everything, it was pretty horrendous. I gave it a good clean with the trusty dirt nurse just to try to give us a good base to start from. Then moved on cleaning up the uh, engine bay, just vacuuming everything and started the mammoth epic task of trying to get rid of all of this red dust on the chassis. This car had obviously lived in a very dusty remote area um, for many years and so my goal was to just get off as much crud from the chassis as possible before it went to paint. This was important so we didn't contaminate the paint and we could get a nice finish. It's also always nice to, to work with a, a clean slate. I then painted the wheel wells and started stripping the engine. Now this motor had not been apart for 26 years. Well that's what it looked like at least. You can see here as I remove the valve cover just how much crud is inside. It was pretty nasty. Then remove the Vanos and the oil filter housing. Took off the cam chain tension, you can see how much wear was on there. And then started removing the cams. A little bit of pickup on this journal, but it's very light. Cam boxes looked excellent. It was just full of this varnish from the oil. I then set about removing the cylinder head. It took some persuasion, but eventually came off. The cylinder head was in remarkably, remarkably good condition. As was everything else, it was just worn out from high mileage. Typical BMW wear on the bearing, you can see from uh, not changing the oil regularly. If you want to see some more of this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button, hit the bell and you're good to go. Throughout this project, I had a lot of custom things manufactured, including this aluminium bush to take up the rubber mount. We then Put in the original suspension so that the car could get on its wheels and go for paint. Here I can, you can see I am reinforced the subframe, also installed the uh, aluminium bushes for the control arms, put the discs and brakes on. Then put the car on the trailer and sent it off to paint. came back in this beautiful two-tone color. This was a specific theme I was going with for the car and I freaking loved it. It was so good. I went for a darker color inside to avoid scratching, but for a beautiful white engine bay. Just look at the before and after. Even the boot got painted and he did a nice touch on the boot lid. It was then time to get stuck into the front suspension. I had these custom Bullstone dampers made. We, we used wheel studs and these fancy Brembo discs. Check out the episode for the details. Also went with PFC pads. I also uh, refurbished the brake calipers and made up these Bush, bush, made up these bushes for the pins to avoid the backlash. You can see the state of the old brake lines, so that would never work. And so I had some new Goodridge braided brake lines made up.
I then got stuck into refurbishing the uprights or the spindles, whatever you want to call them. So I gave them a good clean up and a good few coats of paint. I wanted everything to look as good as it possibly could, considering how much effort we've, I've put into this build. Then started refurbishing the calipers with new seals. Pistons were in great condition. It's just a matter of putting it all back together and pushing in the new bushes. We then tried to assemble the shock with the um, upright, but there was a manufacturing fault, so it had to go back. So I got stuck into the cylinder head. This cylinder head I had chemically cleaned. So then what I did is I stripped all of the valves out. Now the goal was to not go too crazy, just remove the bumps. I used a combination of a carbide tip and the sand, sanding paper on a uh, Dremel. It was my first time doing such a big cylinder head. So I took my time and just focused on what I needed to do. I didn't want any massive changes, just removed the bumps. I then had the cylinder head refurbished and the cams ground to a uh, 264 grind as well as cut the valve seats. I then got stuck into the door cards. I used a, past, a plastic I got from a local supplier with a nice leather textured finish. It doesn't show the scratches. And this is nice and uh, pliable as well as very lightweight. So we just made up, I made up some door cards out of cardboard and then cut the plastic to suit. We used rib nuts and stainless steel screws. We then got a whole bunch of polycarb and started making the uh, windows out of, um, from the original glass. This is where we use the rear windscreen as a template. Cut it off with a jigsaw and it fit really well. We then got stuck into the side windows and just took our time. The way I mounted these was how I did it on the Clio where we slid it in, we then used a um, we used rib nuts and screws to go right through the polycarb and basically lock the, win the window in. We also used rib nuts on the rear windscreen. We later came back and sealed it up with the window sealer. I then got a fabricator in to weld in the reinforcing plates I had laser cut in the back. Also received this custom shift linkage that was made for me from a guy in Cape Town. We installed that. It was looking real good. And then started with the assembly. It was then time to check the piston to valve clearance. In order to do this, you have to install at least one piston assembly with the con rod obviously and the crank. Put the cylinder head on and measure it up. Now the details of this obviously in the episode, but in summary we used Prestec. Put some oil on the Prestec. Clamp down the cylinder head. Put the timing gear on. We then also moved the cams into their position, the advanced position, with the Vanos and then rotated the engine. We felt, I was very careful to feel if there was any lockups. 
yeah you can see that there was there was definitely the valve was touching the press stick but there was plenty clearance it was over two mils which is what we're looking for we then started with the assembly of the engine slow painstaking process of putting everything together in sequence now at this stage I had everything balanced already that means the crank the flywheel um, clutch assembly all of the pistons with the con rods and here it was just a matter of assembling each little component then putting the rings in I checked the gaps they were all good I then started uh, cleaning the bores this is to get any any scoring out of the pits of the bores you can see the dirt, how dirty it was and then it's just a process of cleaning everything marking everything assembling everything making sure there's no, no contaminants going through the motions It's a very slow, tedious process, so take your time and try and enjoy it. I used ARP assembly lube wherever I could. The red lube you see is red line assembly lube. And then marked all the con rods as I went through and talked them. looking real good obviously you can see I had the pistons machined the details of these are in the episode then started with the oil pump Following advice and instructions online, I used Loctite to lock the nut, torqued it down, and locking wire to ensure that that nut did not come off. This tends to happen on the deceleration at high RPM. I also installed a timing chain tensioner which is advisable if you're revving the car over or up to 7,000 well, 7, or over. Uh, uh, my plan was just to rev it to 7 anyway, nothing really over that but it's always a good fail save. Dimensions of this is in the episode. I might do a detailed episode on this if you guys are keen, as well as the oil pump. Then was time to assemble the uh, cams and the Vanos and all of that, so I got stuck into just putting it all together and then doing the cam timing, advancing at 5 degrees as per supplier instructions. That's on the intake cam, we advanced at 5 degrees. I then also rebuilt the Vanos with the Bison Systems Vanos Rebuild Kit that I imported from the US. Also took a lot of time. Tell you what, this was a uh, very stressful build because so much, so many of the components came from either the US or Australia. And if I did not DHL them, then it came through our local post and it took months to get here. So the Bison Systems Vanos Rebuild Kit was one of those. Piston rings were the other. Man, what a stressful time. Then rotate the engine, make sure nothing was hitting. Also machined out the exhaust ports. And then it was time to put this puppy in. Took it off the engine stand, installed the rear main seal, and it was time for the rear, it was time for the flywheel. This beautiful flywheel I got from the US, 
imported it or was still cheaper to import the, a chrome molly flywheel and clutch button clutch assembly than it is to try and get one here in South Africa. Madness. This was a beautiful clutch, it's spring loaded so it doesn't have that nasty bite, torqued it all down. This was also a tedious process, but you just go through the motions, get it done. It was then time to install the front dampers. I got them back, obviously fixed, assembled it, put them in. Man, it was looking fine. We had aluminium bushes rather than poly bushes installed for the control arms. Then put in this, the wheel studs with the red locking lock tight with these beautiful EBC discs. Then started with the calipers. These beautiful PFC pads, these are the 08 compound, which is the endurance compound. then time to move on to the rear suspension. Got the bearing out, gave them a good lick of paint. And then continued on the engine side. Got the new the M3 oil filter housing in, installed the new water pump. I had this the original alternator refurbished. This came out spectacular installed a brand new valve cover gasket which was quite difficult to get also these uh, grommets for the uh, cylinder head super difficult to get and then it was just a matter of going through the motions installing the serpentine belt installing the front cradle we made up custom brackets to put the existing fuel rail onto the M50 cylinder head and then got it on its wheels for the first time. This was a magnificent moment. Also then time to install these custom brackets had made up as well as the steering wheel. All the little jobs. Then moved on this Craig Davies radiator fan. Went for a high quality item here just because of cooling. Also had uh, the original ma radiator modified to be an aluminium radiator for additional cooling. Then started on the oil lines. These are all custom stainless steel braided brake lines with Teflon hose inside. And then went for the exhaust which came out magnificently. Also installed and made up this fuel surge system, goes in the rear. And then it was time for the wiring man to come, he made up a custom harness for the ECU Masters Black ECU and I was getting so excited at this point because it was a big, big push. it was a matter of getting all the lubricants in so we could try and crank this puppy. Go. Then used some Festa hose to connect the brake booster line and then installed a BMC high flow filter. I used the stock airbox 
details of why in the episode. After it had run, we needed to change the oil to put high quality oil in for the dyno. So proceeded with draining the cheap oil, the run-in oil, and then hit a snag. Now, this was a big red flag. There was very shiny bits in the oil, and I pulled the oil filter out, and that obviously became a problem. So, it was out of the engine again. Very sad. Oh, it smells so good. The smell of oil and fuel. I didn't want to pull it out just yet. I wanted to first check the bearings and confirm with Sean from KWT Engineering. When I pulled off the pan, you could see a lot of the junk still in the pan. Oil pump looked fine though, but the bearings were definitely rubbing. Here you can see a few rub marks on the bearings. And this was telltale signs that the block was not straight over its length. The individual clearances were fine, but over the length of the block, it was not straight. So, we made the call. All right, so there she is in all her glory. We had to pull it out, and in the end, as you could see, the crank was rubbing up on the main bearings. What are we gonna do now? Well, as you can see, I'm currently moving. So this will be the actual last episode filmed here in this location. It's a bit sad, life goes on. I need to move premises. That's a very long story, but uh, we carry on. And ultimately, we're gonna keep pushing. We've got big plans. So full disclosure here, that was really sad, considering I put in so much effort into rebuilding that garage. And unfortunately, it was just one of those things that had to happen. So, we carried on. So at the new premises, got stuck into stripping the engine down so it could be shipped off to Sean KWT Engineering and again a massive thank you and shout out to Sean and his uh, efforts on getting this thing repaired. So, wrapped it up, the courier came the next day and fetched it. Once I got it back, it was a matter of just assembling it. Luckily, Sean and uh, the team from KWT did the bottom end for me, so it was just a matter of me taking it from there and doing the assembly. Got the cylinder head on with the new head gasket, talked it all down to spec, installed the cam boxes, brand new hydraulic lifters, because those were noisy on startup, got it all together and bolted that puppy in. I bagged and tagged everything to make sure I didn't lose place of where we were and made sure I talked everything as I went through the process. It's moments like these you appreciate. I was on a mission to get this thing running again, so we did. The one thing you might be thinking to yourself is, bloody hell, Jacques, these wheels are freaking tiny. Well, that's because they are. They're 15 inch rims. Now, I was going to run these rims originally, but having thought about it a lot, I'm concerned about A, the brake cooling on the front and rear, um, as well as the integrity of the rim. I've seen failure of stock rims before, and I'm just a bit concerned about the dur durability of the rim in a motorsport environment. Also, I got a bit of a feeling that the internet is not that happy with me running 15 inch rims. So, boom, I got me some BMW M Sport 17 inch rims. I had the rims refurbished and painted white and they came out absolutely stunning. I'm a sucker for white wheels. Had some Dunlops installed. Shout out to ATS for me up with these awesome Dunlops and also had the uh, fog light covers painted the same color as the wheels while we were busy with the white. So put them on and man do they look good. I'm such a sucker for white wheels. The 
then got some Avgas from Vonnebloom Airport and got this puppy ready for the dyno. Loaded her up and went back to RBTS. She was looking so sweet. So before you get too excited, this was only a run in Dino that we managed to do. Also please remember that this is at altitude, so here in Johannesburg, Gauteng, we are 1500 meters above sea level. That equates to more or less 18% less power and torque as, you, as opposed to being at the coast. It doesn't always work that way in terms of a straight calculation because of the mass, air density and the temperature, etc, etc, etc. So when you dyno at the coast and you, you dyno at altitude, it's, it's not always just a straight 18%. But in terms of a static calculation, it is 18%. What do we get? What was the power? And everybody's asking, so let's see. The car made 124 kilowatts on the wheels at five and a half thousand uh, rpm so the power kind of goes up and starts to plateau and hopefully we're going to see another little spike in the in the power as we rev it out to 7000 rpm later after this uh, after we change the oil and we're ready to send it in terms of torque the motor made um, 252 newtons at 5000 rpm so the torque peaks at about 5,000 then it starts to dip significantly so I'm not sure it will make more torque than that that's a fairly good number remember this is on the wheels at altitude all right so it is time the time has finally come I've lost my voice I'm so excited the journey is usually the part that you remember anyway so what I was speaking about was the vehicle branding still need to put the black strips on but Oh, Ink Monkey did an amazing job. Shout out to Marty. We then went off to Maputo, Mozambique for the Maputo Auto Show. Dropped it on its nose for the show, gave it an excellent clean. It was its first clean after it had uh, the decals on and just put the, bump st the bumper strips on which were also painted, oh my word, this thing was looking mint. Pulled off the uh, steering cover that had been there for over a year. Installed some brand new BMW emblems. My word, she was looking fine. This is probably the cleanest this car will ever look. Because once you start racing them, unfortunately, they just get scuffed up. But the show was an absolute success. Everybody loved the car. We also installed some white tint over the front lights for protection and give it that Lamar look. The accommodation was beautiful. The location was beautiful. It was then time to see how much weight we removed. I put on some corner weight scales, measured it up and the weight loss was significant. 260 odd kilograms. Growing up I was always attracted to motorsport. I remember watching hours of Stanek Group N production car racing. Finally going to watch the 9 hour Group N endurance race on the main straight at Kilani Raceway in Cape Town. Cars carrying battle scars from hours of intense racing. Racing into the night, brakes glowing red, asking anyone who looked like a driver for their autograph. Manufacturing giants going head to head in battle for the crown of South Africa's most prestigious trophies. BMW versus Opel versus Toyota versus Nissan, etc, etc. It was fast, it was hard, it was wild, it was glorious. Some even say the glory days. All I know is I was hooked. This is what started my journey with this cross I called Motorsport. This is what started the build of this car. 
This is what led us to this day. That's a bit crazy. <laughs> Fucking hell. Wow. Wow. So we're just doing a bit of a bolt and nut check, a spanner check, and then we found we've got an oil leak by the dipstick on the sump. So we're trying to figure out what's going on there. But the first session was successful, the car feels amazing. Uh, there's a bit of rubbing here and there, so we just might have to raise the right height a bit. It feels amazing, very quick in a straight line, handles well. I haven't really leaned on the car because it's, it's rubbing a bit here and there, but um, first test went, went really well, so I'm um, tough. We just gotta make sure everything's fine. <laughs> Okay, so second session, we're just going to take it easy again, see what it feels like. Car feels good. trying to bend in the brakes. PFC pads are amazing. Fuck it so fast. So just taking it easy and <laughs> it's not happening. Oh man. Lord, it's fast. Look at that! 
the brakes there. Take it easy, this car is so fast. There's smoke coming out, there's smoke coming out. That's not good. Oh shit. Hope that's smoke on the exhaust or something. Pushed it a bit hard there. Car feels amazing. Saw a bit of smoke, that is not good. Bit worried about that. After speaking to people on the side of the track, then doing lots of inspections, we figured out that the smoke is coming from oil leaking out from various places on the engine, because BMW, onto the exhaust, especially through the high speed corners. So to get rid of this, we need to fix all the oil leaks and try again. Okay, let's go and do another session. We have to just watch everything. Sun is setting nicely. Car feels so good. Warming up the tires. It's just amazing how well this car handles. in third year just because it has so much torque look at that Speechless. I'm speechless. So we'll just do a cool down lap now. What an amazing car and what an amazing way to get this thing on the track. What a two years it's been. Just listen to it. Let's see if we can get it sideways here. And it just responds so well. Something's happening in the fast right-hander there. Just incredible. I'm in love with this car. And uh, just takes it. Seems to just take it. What a car. As the sun set on a truly magnificent day, it was hard not to feel overwhelmed. I had achieved so much. The car was everything I hoped it could be, and more. We have the ability to make this life wonderful and to seek out every adventure. It is important that we do this no matter what situation you find yourself in. We have one shot at this. Make it count. Alright, so what a day it's been. Is he taking some pictures? I mean, just look at that beast. Just look at it. What an epic day. 
we got some problems with uh, oil leaks um, that's pretty much the only thing the car pulls so well it handles well I'm just over the moon with how good this car is um, Andrew has been helping me with filming uh, big shout out to him thank you so much Andrew and uh, yeah so we're just taking some pictures now for our website and uh, man I tell you what what a car what a beautiful day Thank you so much, everybody who supported me again. Thank you, Five Star. Thank you for uh, the build and everything. And yeah, hopefully soon we can get this car on the track. But for now, just look at it, man. What an amazing car.